Good morning, friends. It is 9 a.m. on November 3rd, a little after 9. But anyways, so the 24-hour, technically 25-hour, Tezuka manga readathon is starting in a little less than an hour, and I am so excited. I'm showered. I'm ready to go, fresh and clean, and I'm starting to see all these people participating. It's so fun so far. I am really looking forward to this. So I started up um, doing some polls on my Instagram stories just because I want you guys to help me pick throughout the day. I think that'll be fun. And I'm working on coming up with other things that are more interactive where you get to participate a little bit more and contribute a little bit more so that I can um, get you guys a little more involved. But yeah, this is my first time doing this. So I hope you guys will bear with me. This is something totally out of my wheelhouse, but really fun. And I'm really excited to do. Hopefully I don't go too overboard. That's my other worry is that I'll go overboard with all the Instagram stuff and not actually read very much. And I have 12 volumes. Well, technically 16 volumes because two of those are three and one omnibuses that I'm hoping to get through in the next 24, 25 hours. So anyways, yeah, I am really excited to be doing this. Again, sorry, I'm barefaced at the moment, but you guys typically don't care. So... <laughs> And it's a vlog. You guys can bear with me a little bit for a vlog, right? That's neither here nor there. Thanks again to Laura and Jen for inviting me along on this fun journey with them. And it's just, I'm so excited. I I had a hard time going to sleep last night because I was like a kid in a candy store or a kid on Christmas Eve where I just wanted to get up. And I wanted today to start and I want it to be 10 o'clock already so we can just get going and it's going to be a blast. I have decided that the first thing I'm going to read is Sacrificial Prince and the King of Beasts. Wow, that like really is bad. Yeah, Sacrificial Prince and the King of Beasts, Volume 3. I've been so anxiously awaiting this volume that this is going to be the first thing I read for the readathon. And this goes with the animals or nature category that we've got. And then I'm going to pick up one of the omnibuses and I'm having you guys choose whether it's going to be Kenshin or Evangelion that I tackle first. And then I'll probably do a little love story and then go back to the other omnibus. It's kind of going to be my plan. And then from there, um, I'll have you guys pick some more as we go. But yeah, so I'm way excited, guys, like beyond excited. So I wanted to get this vlog started and yeah. I will link my TBR so that you guys can officially know why I chose what I chose. And I'm just really looking forward to all of them. It's going to be a blast. So hello again. So it is time to start. I'm so excited. So yeah, Sacrificial Princess and the King of the Beast is still sitting on my bed. I'm going to go grab it and I'm going to dig in because I am so ready for this. Are you ready for it? Because I am. Hey guys, so I just finished my first read for 24 Hour Tezuka, which was Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts. This was so good. I'm like on the verge of tears because I loved this so much. This particular volume involves one of her, like probably her only human friend coming to try to rescue her. And it the dialogue that happens within this series is fantastic and brilliant and I absolutely adore it but I really liked the character of her friend Ilya I think he's going to be an interesting character that will pop up occasionally throughout the series and I love the way this volume went down like there was so much in this that was so perfect and brilliant I can't wait for the next one I'm so I hate that I found this so early in the run because now I have to wait for each publication and it makes me a little sad that I have to wait, but I love this story so much that I want to support it and buy it as it comes out. So if you have not tried Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts, I highly recommend you do. Like, it is such a good story. Such a good story. And the art in it is brilliantly beautiful. Let's see. Where's the... There's one particular panel that... Yeah, this one. I mean, come on, guys. It's just, it's brilliant. The whole story is, oh, it's so good. Anyways, I'm now going to move on to the omnibus that you guys picked for me, and we'll go from there.
Hey guys, so the Twitter sprints finished up not too long ago that Laura started, and it's now a little after noon, 12.15ish. I'm not sure my phone won't tell me when I'm recording, but anyways, yes, so it's after noon now, so we've been going for a couple hours. I just finished my second read, which is this three-in-one bind-up of Roroni Kenshin. This is volumes 13, 14, and 15. This one went really quick because it was a very battle-heavy omnibus. What's going on in this particular omnibus is very battle-centered and battle-heavy. There isn't a lot of dialogue. It's more just the battle scenes. So it tends to go a little quicker than normal volumes of manga because, you know, there isn't as much text to read. You're just visually looking at it. And the art style in Roroni Kenshin is beautiful, so I do spend a bit of time staring at the panels. They're beautiful. But, yes, this omnibus was really, really good. I really love where this story is headed and the changes that they instilled in other characters. It was just such a fun time. I highly recommend checking out Roroni Kenshin if you haven't, either the anime or the manga. Um, I know the anime has quite a bit of filler, so if you want to avoid all that and just read what's canon, definitely head straight for the manga. And they have them in these nice three-in-one omnibuses now, so it's easier to collect and a little less money to collect as well. That's what I've been doing. So anyways, yes, Kenshin was good. Still loving my reread of that. So now I'm going to do some prep because I'm starting Twitter spins here at 1. So I've got some things I want to do. I want to schedule some things out for the Twitter spreads. So I'm really excited to do that. And yes, my next read will be, I believe you guys picked LDK. Um, I had you guys deciding between LDK and Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. So I think I'm going to do LDK. I think that's what you guys chose. If that's wrong, I'll correct it, obviously, but I'll double check here shortly. But yeah, so that's how the readathon's going. The Twitter sprints were really fun. I hope you guys are enjoying this. We hope to do more stuff like this in the future. I mean, we she always does one that's like a week long, so I'll, I'm hoping at least that this goes well and they keep me along for that journey as well. And yes, anyways, lots of fun. It's been super fun so far today. It's going to be a great day. I'm loving everything I'm reading so far. I've got some new stuff I haven't tried yet, granted, but yes, super excited. Talk to you soon. friends. So I just finished my first Twitter sprint for this readathon. It was really fun. I hope you guys had a good time sprinting with us and enjoyed all my GIF fun. I'll be back in seven hours doing more sprints. Granted, by the time you guys see this, this will all be in the past, but I digress. So during those sprints, I was able to finish the third volume of manga that I wanted to read, which was LDK. This is a lot cuter than I was expecting it to be. So I'm really excited. I do plan on picking up more in this series because I'll probably take this one volume by volume because if it gets to be too much, then I'll obviously stop. But so far, it's really cute. It's really fun. I'm really liking it. I like the guy more than I was expecting to. So yes, thoroughly enjoying this. And I started the baddie, the big baddie that is Neon Genesis Evangelion. I am loving this already. <laughs> I'm not even quite a full volume into it at this point, but I'm, I love this. I get why everybody talks about this now. I fully understand why people hype this story so much. So believe me, I will continue reading and collecting this as well at this point. So I'm really excited to dig back into this. And then I've got you guys picking out my next volume after that as well. And then I'll continue to just have you guys help me pick throughout the day. Um, I'll try to come up with more shenanigans as we go along, and I'll talk to you guys soon. So it is now 3 p.m. We are five hours into the readathon, 
and I just finished my fourth of 12 read. Neon Genesis Evangelion is amazing. Oh my gosh, I loved this so much. So much more than I even was expecting to. So I'm definitely going to continue picking this up. This is such a good, solid story. I mean, this is about teenagers who feel like they have nowhere to go and end up in this program when they're in battle bots doing battle for adults. And it's so interesting in so many ways. You know, one has kind of compressed all of his emotions and for some reason when he's in the bot lets them out. And then the other main character kind of struggles with expressing emotion at all. And so you're getting wonderful stories about people while you're also getting this amazing battle bot action. It's just good. I'm really thoroughly enjoying it. So now that I've finished this, I think I'm going to pause for a bit, take a bit of a break because I'm feeling really good about, you know, being five hours into this, four reads, my two biggest reads in that four hour or in that five hours. And um, I'm going to pause for a minute, you know, maybe, you know, do my hair and makeup so you guys aren't staring at my patchy face all day. And yeah, just kind of get ready for the day, take a pause. Hey friends, change of location. I'm currently in my car. I need to go run to my parents for a little bit and check on the cat that lives there. He used to be my cat. Now he's my parents' cat. His name's Jethro. He's a big lummox and I love him to pieces. But my parents ran out of town, so they asked me to come and spend some time with him and check on him for a minute, so that's what I'm going to go do. And then I've got three volumes of manga with me. If I get through those, then I'll head home quickly. And I don't know, maybe I'll take a trip to the bookstore tonight. I'm well ahead of everything right now. We are... Well, almost six hours into the readathon, I've read four of 12 books. I've got plenty of time. I do have other volumes here that I could read for it, though. So I don't know if I necessarily want to go manga shopping, but it could be fun for a vlog. So maybe I'll put it to Instagram and let you guys decide for me. I don't know. But then again, I'm trying to save my money because I'm going to go book shopping on Tuesday because there's a Brandon Sanderson signing event for Skyward. And that's release day. So I really wanted to go to that. But, you know, to get him to sign it and personalize it, I need to purchase my copy there. Blah, 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 my water. Anyway, <laughs> what's happening right now is I'm going to drive to my parents. I'm going to snuggle a big fluffy cat and read some manga. I'll check in with you soon. So that's Jethro that you just saw. He was a cat from my first marriage. Um, he does much better here with my parents now. And so he, this is where he lives. So typically when my parents travel, they ask me to come over and spend some time with him. He does really well with me because I rescued him and he's a good boy. He's very happy. He's huge. <laughs> but he loves to snuggle and just have company. So that's why I've come over. So I'm going to start by reading Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. I am really excited to be digging into this title you guys picked. And I've got two more that I'll read while I'm here. And then I'll head home just because I'm going to chill, spend some time with Jethro in my childhood home. Because my parents moved into this house three weeks after they got married and they've never moved. And so it's fun to come home to a true home. I know a lot of people don't have that. And I was very blessed to have parents who loved where they landed and stayed. So... Anyways, let's dig in. Hey guys, so I just got home from my parents. Got to snuggle with Mr. Jethro for a while. And I got some volumes of manga read, so let's talk about him a little bit. So the first one I've got here is Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. This is like, this gives me the feels like Oran High School Host Club does. It's funny, it's full of shenanigans, it's got this sweet undertone to it, like almost sickeningly so. And I adore it. I loved this first volume. I will definitely be continuing to collect this series. This is right up my alley. It's totally my aesthetic in life. Absolutely love it. Totally makes me happy. <laughs> like, I can't even tell you how happy this volume made me. I was laughing out loud. I was just 
living my best life while reading it. So yes, Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight is fabulous. So essentially what we're dealing with in this one is we've got this high school age girl who dreams of living a fairy tale romance because she is, you know, the perfect daughter, the perfect student, all those kind of things. So in this, we get to see the side of her where she hides her need and desire for a fairy tale romance. She runs into this actor who's a few years older than her and because they're filming at her school, coincidentally, and they have the student council, which she's on. She's the secretary. They have them be the extras so that they don't have to deal with all the crazy fan girls. And her and this actor start forming a very unconventional <laughs> relationship. And it's hilarious. Oh, my gosh. It makes me laugh so hard. Like, it's not even funny. The next thing I read was Real Account. Now, this definitely is gory. <laughs> so if you're sensitive to gore, definitely pass on this one. But especially the first couple of chapters, they were really intense. Now, this is much more Hunger Games than Sword Art Online. It's not just survival. It's more than that. You have to outsmart the game kind of a situation, not just conquer a game like Sword Art Online. And this one, you have to make tough decisions. Like there's a point where the character has to consider like blocking his sister from his real account to protect her and keep her safe. And it's just really interesting. I will definitely be carry on, carrying on with this. Um, the concept is amazing. The art is wonderful for what it is. Again, it's kind of gory. So if you're sensitive to that, definitely pass on this one. But the story in it is amazing. I am really excited to see how this continues for sure. And last but not least was probably the biggest surprise out of the three that I read while I was at my parents. And that is To Your Eternity. Now this, it definitely deals with reincarnation, but not exactly in the way I thought it was going to. So essentially there's this orb and it's sent out into the world. And what it does is it's learning as it goes. So it can like shape shift almost and form into different things. So early on, it stumbles across this wolf that's injured. So it transforms into said wolf and um, ends up meeting up with the wolf's master and they have an adventure. And this is so good. It is so good. Oh, my gosh. Like I was almost in tears by the end of this volume. And this is just volume one. This is one that's going to rip me up and down and sideways, and I'm totally here for it. You guys know that I occasionally like those stories where they just rip me apart, but I love it the whole way through. That's what this is going to be. So I am really excited to continue on in this one. I think it's going to be a great ride. So those are the ones that I've read for right now. I didn't have you guys pick anything while I was gone. So I'll just see what I feel like and then have you guys pick out of the others that are left. Because that's 7 of 12 volumes. I do have other volumes of manga that I own that I haven't read yet. So if for some reason I run out of things to read, I still have manga I can read. And technically, they all fit into the category, so it's not like it's a big deal. But I, that would just be me being super extra because I'm already reading 12 volumes of manga. Two of those omnibuses. So I don't know. We'll see how things go over the next little bit. I don't know which one I'm going to settle down with, but I'll let you guys know here soon. We have now officially reached the portion of this vlog where I will no longer be wearing pants. So it's eight o'clock at night. Husband and I just had dinner. So it's been hours since I've checked in with you. I got home from my mom's about 530. So it's been two and a half ish hours since I last checked in with you guys. So let's talk about what I got read. So first up, I read Pokemon Adventures volume three. I guess there's a fourth volume that I didn't know about. So I'll have to track that down to finish out the story. But like volume two, I enjoyed this better than the first volume. The first volume I didn't really get into, but two and three have been great. So yes, it's been a lot more fun to read as it's gone on. Like I said, the first volume was kind of drudgery, but I've enjoyed these other two. So maybe it was just that one volume or when I was reading it. I'm not 100% sure. But it's essentially the story of the first like anime and game in this series, but a little, little deeper, a little grittier, a little rougher, not so kid-like, more teenage-like. So, you know, creatures in Pokemon actually get hurt. You see, you know, corrupt adults in 
in different ways and it's good so far. And then I also read volume two of My Little Monster, which I really enjoyed volume two. This is definitely going to be my kind of series. Um, the first volume I enjoyed, but I was hinging a lot on this second volume, actually, because it could have gone one of two ways and it went the way that I liked. So that's good. So yes, I will be continuing on with My Little Monster as well. For those of you who aren't aware, there's this delinquent kid who's not going to school and this smart, intelligent girl is essentially sent to get this delinquent to come back to school, but delinquent gets a crush on said girl, so he starts coming back to school on his own, and he's actually really, really smart. So, anyways, it's all sorts of shenanigans. I'm thoroughly enjoying it so far, so yes. So that's what I've completed since we last talked. I have started Assassination Classroom Volume 6. I really liked, I really only got into the first chapter of this volume, but I really liked what the first chapter contained. And so I am way excited to be continuing on in this series. And you guys hear me talk about this all the time on my channel, so I don't feel like I need to give you an in-depth description of it, because I usually give those in my wrap-ups when I'm talking about Assassination Classroom. So you can just go look at one of those if you want. But yes, so I'm going to get back into finishing Assassination Classroom. It is a little after eight. It's like 10 after maybe. So I'm hoping to finish this before I start doing sprints at nine because I've only got two volumes left on my TBR after I finish Assassination Classroom. So I am doing really well so far. I'm very proud of myself for everything I've read so far because I've really enjoyed everything I've read. Even all these new titles, I have I think I've gotten better at picking up ones that I would actually enjoy than I used to. So yes, I am really loving everything I've picked up. So I'm gonna get back to reading. Hey guys, so it's almost nine. I'm about ready to start doing Twitter sprints. And so my goal during Twitter sprints is to finish, well, to start and finish again. I'd love to get this finished in the hour that I'm going to be sprinting. But when you sprint, sometimes you get distracted. So we'll see what happens with that. But I am so excited to be doing Twitter sprints again. I have this and one other volume because I did finish volume six of Assassination Classroom. It was so good. I really enjoyed it. But yes, so I would love to get through again. And then the only other one I have left on my TBR is Clockwork Planet. So at this point, I've completed all of the challenges at this point. So it doesn't matter if I read anymore. I just would like to complete my TBR because they're volumes that I was wanting to read anyway. So I've, I can get started on this during the sprints. If I finish again quickly, that would be great. But... I'll probably just stay up and at least finish this tonight. And then depending on when I get up tomorrow, I've got four other volumes of manga that I own because I only buy as I plan on reading them that I could read tomorrow morning, depending on when I wake up. With it being daylight savings, I assume I'm going to wake up fairly early <laughs> because my body's already kind of adjusted to that daylight savings schedule. So yeah, anyways, I'm way excited to get going. And if you like GIFs at all, you want to sprint with me because each post will have one because that's just who I am in life. So, all right, guys. So it's now 10 o'clock. I just finished up doing my last round of Twitter sprints for this round of Mongaritathon. I hope Jen and Laura invite me back. I would love it. So during that sprint, I did finish again. This is turning into a much better story than I initially thought it was going to be. I'm really loving it. I am excited to continue on with this series. All of the new series I've tried out so far, I've really loved. So I've been really just way happy and loving life <laughs> when it comes to reading a ton of manga today. And I did also start Clockwork Planet. So I think what I'll do is I'll finish Clockwork Planet and then go to bed. And when I get up in the morning, we'll see what I have time to read. So that's kind of where I'm at. I feel like I'm totally winning this readathon, and it's been way fun. Had I worked today, it wouldn't have been the same situation, I'll tell you that. But because of all my host duties, I didn't want to be stretched too thin. I wouldn't have been able to host nearly as well. 
while working. So since it was only one day, I decided to take today off from work. So yes, I'm going to dig into Clockwork Planet and I'm not going to vlog anymore tonight. So I will check in with you guys in the morning. I'll let you know what time it is and how much time we've got left in the readathon and we'll go from there. Good morning, friends. It's about 830 in the morning on November 4th. And I really wanted to just finish up the readathon with one more read. It's going to be Shortcake Cake. This is another new to me series. I've tried out so many new to me series in this readathon. It just feels right to read this one because all the other series that I have left, I had already been reading for a while or like I'm current on their publication. So I really want to dig in to this one. Because it's a new to me recommendation and it just seems really cute. And I've, like I say, I've really loved everything that I've read so far. So I really want to do this one last one. And then I'm going to call the readathon because might as well. And I'm still kind of tired, so it'll probably take me a little longer than normal to read this one. And my average is 45 minutes to an hour per volume. So, anyways. Let's just go ahead and dig right in and then we'll wrap this puppy up. Hey friends, Shayla here. So it is Sunday afternoon on November 4th. I just wanted to come together and quickly wrap up everything that I read in the 24 hour Tezuka readathon. So I'm gonna go ahead and blitz through everything that I read. I did complete my entire TBR in a little over 12 hours, and then I did read an additional volume of manga. So let's go ahead and dig right in. The bonus volume of manga that I read during this readathon was Shortcake Cake Volume 1. I ended up really enjoying this title. This is about a girl who is commuting two hours to school who has a friend that lives nearby in a boarding house, and so she encourages our main character here to move into this boarding house. So she has her, you know, unofficially, because they're not supposed to. She stayed over one night, got to know some of the people in the house, and decided she wanted to move into this house. So this is about her adventures living in this boarding house with her friend and all of these other people. It has a reverse harem feel to it already, and I can already tell it's a title I'm going to love. I thoroughly enjoyed this title. If it sounds fun at all to you, I highly suggest picking it up. Next up, we have Assassination Classroom Volume 6. This was one of these suspense titles or ones with medical themes. I ended up really enjoying this particular volume. I'm slowly working my way through Assassination Classroom, and then when I'm done reading it, I'm going to watch the entire anime. So I'm really excited to be continuing on. I continue to like each volume even more as the story goes along. So this is a series that I'm definitely fond of. If you've been hesitant to pick it up at all, I do suggest picking it up. It's been a real treat for me. The next one that I have in my stack here is Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts, Volume 3. I was highly anticipating this release. This is a newer series to me. This is about a young girl who was raised to be the sacrifice of the King of Beasts. Through a set of circumstances after she is brought to the King of Beasts as a sacrifice, she ends up the bride of the King of Beasts instead of the sacrifice. And in this particular volume, we have somebody from her past come and try to rescue her from the King of Beasts, and it's very interesting, and I really, really love this title. I highly suggest picking this one up. This is one of my new favorites, my new current running favorite, maybe. I don't know. Ancient Megas Pride still has a very strong hold on my heart, but this is very, very close to that. Next in the stack is Pokemon Adventures Volume 3. I guess there's actually a fourth volume in this particular first run of Pokemon Adventures that I didn't know about. I thought it was just done in three, but it's actually got a fourth. And I enjoyed this one much like I enjoyed the second one. I didn't really enjoy the first one very much, but two and three were really enjoyable. I felt like it got deeper into the story, deeper into the characters, and I've really enjoyed my read of this. And I used this one for animals and nature. And that's what I used this one for as well, the Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts. The next one on the stack is LDK. This is a romance title, so I used it for our romance category. This is about a high schooler who's living alone and, you know, keeps hearing about this popular boy that everybody likes. Anyways, it ends up that he moves in next door. Something happens in his apartment, so he ends up moving in to her apartment, basically, until it's repaired. Shenanigans ensue. It's really fun. It's really cute. I do plan on picking up more on this title. And now we have My Little Monster Volume 2. 
I'm really continuing loving this series. This is about a delinquent boy who keeps ditching school and so Super Brainiac Girl is sent to get delinquent boy to come back to school. Delinquent boy has a thing for smart girl. Things and shenanigans ensue from there. It's really fun. It's really enjoyable. It's a pretty lighthearted title for the most part, but it does deal with some deeper family-rooted issues. So I'm really enjoying it so far and I look forward to continuing to collect it. And now we have one of the two omnibuses that I read during this readathon, and that is Rurouni Kenshin volumes 13, 14, and 15. This was a very battle-heavy omnibus for Rurouni Kenshin. We're dealing with a big set of battles, and it's been really enjoyable. I really liked what we saw from all of the characters in this arc. People that we've seen before, that we're seeing again, who have grown since, and all these kind of things. So... Rurouni Kenshin is a great title. It's about a wandering samurai who's just looking for peace in his life. And it's about the people that he meets along the way and the adventures that he has. I highly suggest picking up this title if you haven't. It's kind of one of those older rite of passage kind of titles to me, but it's really good. I highly recommend picking it up. Next up is Real Account. This is a very gory... Well, I keep forgetting to tell you guys. My Little Monster was for romance. Rurouni Kenshin was for Historical Era. And Real Account was my other suspense title I had picked out. This was definitely a suspense read for me. This is about a boy who, who has a lot of followers on this thing called Real Account. It's basically like the newest social media craze. He has like 1,500 followers. Anyways, all these people who kind of can't leave Real Account alone. There's about 10,000 of them. They're all sucked into the real account world and into this game and it's a game to the death. If you lose all your followers you die. There are all sorts of other circumstances in which you could end up dead and it's <laughs> very gory the way they go about this in this particular title but the premise is really solid and really really good. I mean this delves with things of you know do I block people to protect them or do I let them continue to be one of my followers even though they might end up dead if I don't play this game right? Because it, was, it wasn't it was just the people with the accounts that died. A lot of their followers died as well. So it's one of those things where you had to kind of evaluate things like that. It's really interesting so far. I do plan on picking up volume two. This is one that I'm going to take volume by volume to see how I do with it. Because I don't want to end up buying the entire series and hating it two or three volumes in, you know what I mean? So this is one that I will buy one at a time and see how I go from it. Now we have again, which is a past lives reincarnation pick. So this is about a boy who reaches his graduation day of high school and he doesn't feel like he really amounted to anything, didn't really get to know people, just kind of tried to be invisible for those three years. Anyways, a set of circumstances happens and he wakes up on his first day of high school all over again and he gets to basically redo high school. And so that's what this is about and it involves a more masculine version of cheerleading that's native to Japan. I forget what it's called right now. It starts with an O. I'll write it down right here. I can't remember, but anyways, it's really interesting how they go about all of that. So I do suggest picking up again, and I will be picking up more, more of this. Next, we have a title that basically had me laughing the whole way through, and that is Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. This is very much like shoujo to the nth degree. I was getting all of the Oran High School Host Club vibes as I was reading this. Not necessarily in the reverse harem side, but just in the humor and the wit and the shenanigans that were ensuing. So basically we're dealing with a high school girl who's the secretary on her student council. She ends up an extra filming this movie at their school with this big hot actor. Anyways, actor boy begins to chase her. She's always been looking for a fairy tale romance. She's wondering as they start to kind of pursue a friendship and relationship, if this is really like her fairy tale or if this dude's just weird and it's it's shenanigans that's all i can really tell you without spoiling things but it's hilarious i laughed so hard while reading this volume i will definitely be continuing on with this one and now we have clockwork planet volume one this was a really interesting title essentially there's this geeky boy who's obsessed with all things mechanical he's in his apartment just doing his thing and all of a sudden he has this giant crate come crashing down through the roof and in it is this beautiful 
perfect specimen female robot. This is like a really expensive robot. Anyways, she's apparently broken, so he gets in, fixes her, and gets her operational, and things go from there. So essentially what's happened is the world was destroyed and then rebuilt in kind of this clockwork steampunk almost kind of feel. And that's why it's called Clockwork Planet. It's really good. I'm really enjoying this title so far. I definitely will be picking up more. Next we have one of my favorite reads of the entire readathon. The other one is the next one I'll talk about. So that is To Your Eternity. This is so different than I thought it was going to be, but it's so good. Oh, by the way, Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. I keep forgetting to do this. I'm awful. Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight was one of my romance picks. Clockwork Planet was... Um, something to do with machines. And then To Your Eternity, again, is a reincarnation past lives kind of story. And this is about an orb that essentially can morph and change into anything and the different lives that he encounters and the things that he becomes and the things he learns along the way. It's beautiful. I cried in this first volume. It's so good. And I'm definitely going to be picking up more. Like, this surprised me and blew me away in the best way. So if you've been sitting on To Your Eternity but thinking about it, definitely pick it up. And last but not least, and I think this was probably my favorite read of the new titles that I picked up during this readathon, and that is Neon Genesis Evangelion. This is a mecha-based manga series in which we're dealing with a teenage boy who's essentially forced into this battle robot to save the world. That's a really, really basic <laughs> description of what's going on in Neon Genesis Evangelion, but I prefer to go in a little blind, and I think it's best if you do, because then you can let the story kind of tell itself. This is a very character-driven story, as well as it's got plenty of action, so you're not going to be bored reading it. This is a three-in-one omnibus, and it flew by so quick. I thoroughly loved it. I will be collecting the entire series. I am so happy, happy, happy that my husband basically said, that's the one you're reading. <laughs> when I was talking about suggestions. <laughs> so I'm glad I took him up on his suggestion and decided to go with it because it really just made my heart happy and I will collect the entire series. So friends, those are the 13 titles that I read in a 24 hour period. If you participated in, manga re in the 24 hour Tezuka readathon, let me know in the comments down below. Tag your video if you've got one or any posts related to it. I will go through and check all of those so I can see everything, but yes, or at least comment letting me know that you have something posted and I'll come check out your channel because this was so fun. Thanks again to Laura and Jen for inviting me to participate and come along. It's been a real fun journey. Thanks again for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.